Zevlora Troll Exile got spoiled a couple of weeks ago, and I decided to put together a deck for it right away. However, I already had some videos queued up and had also decided that today, May 23rd, would be the first day I make videos about the new cards from Battle for Baldur's Gate. This would give my lovely wife and editor Cute Stuff more time to work on them and put less pressure on her. That being said, I plan on doing lots of videos on the new cards from Commander Legends 2, Battle for Baldur's Gate. Some of the videos will be budget, like this one. Others will not be. I don't want to be tied to only making budget deck lists, because I know that some of you can afford to drop $500 on a new commander deck, while others cannot. If you want to be notified when those new commander videos post, be sure to click the subscribe button and ring the bell to be notified of all new videos coming out. With that out of the way, let's take a look at Zevlor Eltrul Exile. To start, he's a 4-mana legendary 4-2 tiefling warrior with haste. He also has an activated ability where we can pay 2 and tap him. If we do, the next instant or sorcery spell we cast that targets only a single player or permanent an opponent controls gets copied for each other opponent or a permanent they control. This makes it so that spells that target a single opponent, which normally don't see a lot of play in Commander, are much more powerful. However, any spell that has multiple targets doesn't get affected. That's not to say we don't want to run those spells, just that they don't synergize well with our commander. Additionally, because our commander makes these spells a bit more expensive, we're going to want to focus on some mana ramp. Also, our commander copies our spells for us, which means that magecraft effects will be great in this deck. So, now that we have our plan, we can get to work on our deck list. But before we do, we should keep in mind our checklist. 50 mana sources, usually split between 37 lands and 13 pieces of ramp. 10 pieces of card advantage. 8 to 10 pieces of spot removal, 2 to 3 board wipes, 2 pieces of graveyard hate, and 1 sudden eye win card. To start, let's take a look at the core of our deck. We've got Sedgemore Witch to give us a ton of blockers, Professor Onyx and Ral Storm Conduit for card advantage, and their respective static abilities pair very well with our commander, as well as Rings of Bright Hearth, Twinning Staff, and Battle Mage's Bracers to copy our spells more than just twice. Now, we're in Grixis, which means we're the bad guys. Unless there's an Esper player at the table, of course. But even though green is the scariest color in Commander, Grixis players are still considered the villains. So we might as well embrace it and go for the two meanest things you can do in Magic. Land Destruction and Discard. So for Land Destruction, we've got Seismic Spike, Turf Wound, Pillage, and Cleansing Wildfire. For Discard, we've got Go Blank, Kim to Turok, Rakdos' Return, Remorseless Punishment, Consigned to Oblivion, Demogorgon's Clutches, and the one card that everyone was excited to pair with Zevlor, Cruel Ultimatum. But what could be more evil than discarding cards and blowing up lands? How about Theft? To steal from our opponents, I've included Inevitable Betrayal, Extract Brain, and Siphon Insight. Now, with all the discard cards we're running, we could be feeding an opponent's graveyard recursion deck. So to help counter that, we're running Crypt Incursion and Learn from the Past. Our Counterspell package consists of Negate, Counterspell, and Countersquall. For spot removal, we've got Sudden Edict, Angrath's Rampage, To the Slaughter, Abrade, Feed the Swarm, Terminate, Bedevil, Farika's Libation, Hercules Recall, Leadership Vacuum, and Mog Salvage. Our board wipes include River's Rebuke and Polymorphist's Jest. I know that Polymorphist's Jest isn't actually a board wipe, but my hope is to have it in hand when someone else board wipes against the Aristocrats player, or when someone attacks us with an army of dinosaurs when we have nothing but pests on board. To keep our hand full, we're running some additional interaction that we'll want to copy with our commander, namely Thought Scour, Risk Factor, Commit Memory, and Invoke Despair. For more traditional card draw, we've got Archmage Emeritus, Stroke of Genius, and Blue Sun Zenith. Our mana ramp consists of Soul Ring, Arcane Signet, Mind Stone, Felwar Stone, Commander Sphere, Solemn Simulacrum, Storm Kiln Artist, Talismans, Signets, and Diamonds. Our lands consist of Command Tower, Exotic Orchard, Crumbling Necropolis, the Typed Snow Duels, Temples, Artifact Bridges, Guild Gates, Bounce Lanes, Game One Lands, Six Islands, Six Swamps, Five Mountains, 
and a Bajuka Bog. So let's take a look at our deck and see how it compares to our checklist. 54 mana sources, split between 38 lands and 16 pieces of ramp. A little heavy, but we want that with this deck. 10 pieces of card advantage, with a lot of it being tied to interaction. 11 pieces of spot removal, plus 3 counter spells, and a ton of hand and targeted land destruction. 2 board wipes, 3 pieces of graveyard hate, no sudden I win cards, but we do have 3 extra copy effects that can make the deck insane. Specifically, Battle Mage's Bracers, Rings of Bright Hearth, and Twinning Staff. Battle Mage's Bracers, when equipped to our commander, makes it so that all of our spells copy 4 times, assuming we activate it in addition to our commander. You have the original spell, plus the two copies, but the two copies are each copied again. Rings of Bright Hearth do the same thing. Twinning Staff only adds one additional copy, but the advantage is we get that copy for free. With all those added copy effects, that means if we ever get enough mana, we could cast either Blue Sun Zenith or Stroke of Genius and deck our opponents. As far as upgrades go, other than better lands, I would add Jessica's Will, which is already an amazing card, but would be even more amazing if we could target all three of our opponents. Primal Amulet for mana reduction and additional copy effects, Bribery for some more theft, and Cryptic Command. Quick note on Cryptic Command as well as any of the other spells we have where there are options. If you copy a spell with choices, like Angrass Rampage or Farka's Libation, the copies of the spell make the same choice. So if we cast Angrass Rampage and choose to have an opponent sacrifice a Planeswalker, each copy of the spell will also force our other opponents to sacrifice Planeswalkers. There are several paths you can take to build this deck. How are you building Zeblor Eltruel Exile? Thanks for tuning in. Once again, a huge shout out to my editor Cute Stuff. I couldn't make these videos without her. If you'd like to hire her to edit your own videos, there's a link to her Fiverr page below. Please like and subscribe for more Commander content, or you can click here for more deck tech videos. I've also started a Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash Danan or click the link in the description below. Again, thanks for tuning in, and I'll see you all again next time on Commander by Danan.